This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. And I'm gonna go check uh, sugar apples again because I have somebody that, I thought they were local, but they're just in Fort Pierce and they wanted sugar apples. And I'd kind of like picked all the ripe ones yesterday and sold them. There was only a couple, but I am like so picky about picking my sugar apples. Um, Cause I don't want somebody to have a bad experience. And I've like, been growing them long enough and fruiting them long enough to know when they're like good and when they're not going to be good. So I don't want anybody to have a bad experience at $10 a pound. So I'm going to go check those because somebody's coming by today that's from out of town and uh, they had some that were close. So I know that they'll be okay. Um, so I'm going to go check those, see about how many. Um, I'm gonna talk about plastics. Ugh. God, all this stuff is so depressing. Um, Cause it has to do, believe it or not, with uh, orchard floor management, which is what I've been talking about, um, how we do a natural orchard floor management. So all these pollution problems, there is a solution and it's nature. Um, it's as simple as that. Nature is what fixes the pollution that we have caused. And um, hopefully the, it can fix the plastic pollution. It, it will over time, but they've recently found that plastic is in people's blood. Of course, they haven't come out and sequenced it or uh, uh, given the sequence of what plastic it is um, that they found. And they may not have sequenced it yet. Um, plastic used to grow food um, is the plastic that is the PFASs, so the um, cancer-causing plastics that they've removed from water bottles. But I kind of am thinking that they really didn't remove it from the water bottles. They just changed the... Um, changed a molecule in it so that it wasn't the same sequence and it's basically the same thing but it'll take another 40 years before 30 years before we see that the um the uh changed plastic in the bottles is actually causing cancer too because like 15 percent of the pfas's you know that's the forever chemicals that were in like the teflon and the plastic bottles and stuff like that. Um, only about 15% of them have been sequenced and all of them were like cancer causing. So the other 85% are probably cancer causing also. They just haven't been sequenced. So it's just unknown. So that's how I think that they've like changed the, the molecule and the plastic so that it's not, yeah, we removed it. it we changed it but did you really remove it or did you just create a new carcinogen? It's so depressing. So I guess they've done studies and they found that soils contain more plastics than the oceans. Um, I know that in Florida, we have a major PFAS problem in our drinking water. The PFAS is, is the plastics. So people use this, uh, Osmocote. These are nursery grown plants that I got. And I first started seeing the, the plastic um, slow release fertilizers about like more than 30 years ago in the 80s, the late 80s, early 90s. And um, I didn't think anything of it. And uh, it's sure taken me a while to understand that it's all pollution and um, the shade cloth that people put down on the ground <laughs> and the plastic that they use to grow our, our, our plants, the food plants, is all polluting the, the soil and the plants are uptaking the, the uh, plastics and we're consuming them. I, it's in, we breathe it in the air, we can't get away from it, but <clears throat> I guess the 
UN or something has like agreed to change the plastic so that it's like the water bottles, which is probably not a fix. <laughs> it's just like, it's so scary. Um, so I was showing those bamboos yesterday. Um, and then here's a, the bamboo I get are, um, this is the first one I planted. I like this one. Uh, get my little sticks for my aeroids from. It's been so dry here. Uh, it's like really uh, super dry. We don't water anything. <clears throat> Out of fear that the water is polluted with plastics, PFASs, molecules from plastics. And all the other stuff that they use in Florida, the insecticides, the ant killers, the, the glyphosate. It's uh, a real problem. And it doesn't seem to be getting any better. Nobody seems to pay attention to it. Um, I still pe see people putting down groves with shade cloth for an uh, orchard floor to keep the weeds out. And in Florida, I mean, I, I, I kind of have shown that the weeds are needed in order to <clears throat> put carbon, organic matter into the soil, which is the most hardest thing to do in Florida. But the weeds do it for you for free. <laughs> but people want to, people want to <laughs> smother them out and put shade cloth on it, which is just Frankly, it's making a, like a super fun site out of your farm. <clears throat> I just, I don't get it. And the, the netting they use for, to keep bugs away. Oh my God. That's the same thing. Same freaking thing. It's all plastic, movable plastic made out of vinyl chloride. It causes cancer, several different types. So I guess they'll just change. So I got to look at these sugar apples. So these little ones right here, they look, when they get that color, they can be picked. Um, they're not the biggest sugar apples in the world, but they sounded like they really wanted them. And I got to learn to uh, stop being such a control freak on my fruit and um, let them eat it. It's not ready. It's, there's so much uh, fruit on these trees that it's just going to be a super long season. And I'm glad that people, this doesn't really seem like it needs any water. I mean, even with this horrible drought we've been having, the bananas seem just fine. We got uh, fruit, lots of fruit on our bananas finally again. The big ones, of course, these, these aren't going to be giving us bananas probably until next year. Um, and some of them, a lot of them, the smaller ones, probably not for two years. So um, this one, I'm sure will give us fruit next year. Probably if we got some rain, they would grow a lot bigger. But they don't seem to really need the rain. Even the ginger seems fine. People don't think that you can plant plants next to other plants, that you gotta remove all the competition from your tree. But I found that that just makes it harder to grow uh, a tree or, uh, organically when you remove all that. So I add it. I think more plants are better. Um, and I think that with all that life, it has a less chance of, um, Having plastics from the air wind up in my fruit. Uh, this one's way too small, but these, I could probably pick some. Here's some here. I gotta go on the other side of the fence, cause, or on the other side of this uh, uh, ginger, because, yeah, oh yeah, there's, there's fruit. I don't know why I'm such a control freak. 
when it comes to the sugar apples. I think it's because I had a bad experience from a fruit I bought from the Palm Beach Rare Fruit Council and I almost pulled up my sugar apples because of it. But it took my partner years to start eating sugar apples again uh, and I had to like like bring the choice sugar apples to him. Now he likes them so um, just don't want anybody to have a bad experience. But it looks like there's plenty. I'm gonna come out here and pick them. Uh, I shouldn't. I guess I should have done it now while it's semi-cool. It's been so hot. Has it been hot everywhere? It looks like it. All those forest fires, I couldn't imagine the smoke in California downwind from all those forest fires and how horrible that must be. Um, I wonder if the microplastics in the air um, change rain cycles. Probably. This little ginger looks like it's struggling in the drought. Um, but that's one out of all of them. Oh yeah, I see lots of sugar apples I can get, I guess. I wanted only to sell like one pound or bigger sugar apples, but I'm realizing now that that's probably not even feasible on this, these varieties um, to get one pound or more consistent fruit because even with the, all the input I did on these sugar apples, I mean, they look good, but they, uh, the fruit didn't get huge. Some of it's good size, a lot of it's good size. Um, Let me go on the outside and see if there's any on that side. This is the side along the fence. So organic farms in the area thought that we abandoned this property because I stopped mowing the orchard floor. But this, this is also a farm that um, planted a tropical fruit grove and it all died and they never tried again. So, um, mine didn't die. Mine isn't gonna die if we ever sell this place um, or if it sells after I'm gone. Um, Cause it's growing on its own and that's how trees grow. I, I, I just, just, I'm just shocked that people um, think that they have to intervene on everything when it comes to growing. Putting plastic, my uh, Osmocote and slow release fertilizer into your, your pots that you're growing your fruit trees in, because a lot of people grow fruit trees in pots, because they want them in cold areas, in plastic pots with Osmocote, and then they eat the fruit. And that's, uh, that's how you get microplastics in your blood, I guess. That and breathing them. I'm glad I live on the Atlantic coast where the air comes from the east and there's really no humans out there polluting in the ocean. So it's a relatively, uh, they don't seem to be as ripe on this side of the tree. Relatively uh, human free zone, which makes the air fresher here, I'm sure. More fresh, fresher. Oh yeah, there's some good fruit over here, but it's not, it's not a uh, ripe yet. It's quite a bit of fruit. I would say there's like, most trees have at least 20 fruit on them. Um, 
at least, or more. Probably if it rained all the time, the fruit would have been bigger, but um, as long as they're good, mostly blemish-free fruit until just before they're ripe, I'm okay with that. Um, but when they start getting black spots on them, like this, when they're small, I don't like that. Um, so. People throw their beer cans in here because people drink in Florida. Drink and drive. I used to do it. <clears throat> oh, yeah, there's some good fruit here. Here's some good fruit, yeah. All right, yeah, I'm okay. Um, I was worried. That's when you want to pick them when they look like that. Um, they just start changing color. And that's when they're ready. I know, personally, I like to wait until they're uh, soft on the tree, but for fruit sales, it's probably not practical to do that. I don't think I would ship sugar apple trees, or sugar apple fruit. I don't sell trees, we're not a nursery. Um, starting to look uh... here's one of my little bananas I just did planted it you know divided it a couple weeks ago I think I did a video about a week ago maybe and never watered I don't nothing's ever been watered when we plant it we don't water our trees none of them and um, they seem just fine um, so all these bananas were started they've never been watered very minimal inputs. Um, 26 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year. <clears throat> Most of our fertility comes from the orchard floor. You get zero fertility from plastic. Um, just so if you're using plastic mulch, there's no fertility, there's just pollution. Um, I guess if you're feeding your plants chemicals, that's okay for you. Um, chemicals fed to plants wind up in your food and that's what you consume. And that's how the average American consumes 16 pounds of chemicals per year in, from their food. I think it's 16. It's like 15. 15, 16 pounds. It's probably more than that, I would think. Um, so that's what we're eating. Pollution. <clears throat> it's pretty obvious that everyone's sick and the planet's sick, so uh, I just, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take. Hopefully this farm can, um, look at these cit citrus uh, trees. I mean, why, these are seed grown citrus and these trees are covered in fruit. Four years from seed, dry farmed, and the trees are very healthy. Um, there's no greening that I can see. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it's mind boggling to think what we've, think we can do with pollution. But when people are always confusing people, which is what they do, but when they change the molecular makeup of a PFAS into one that hasn't been studied, look at all these. Can you see these wasps flying through the air here? It's like thousands of them. I don't know if you can see those. You can see them in the sun down there. Oh yeah. There, they're little. There. Anyway, there's hundreds of them. Anyway, uh, 
It's black sapote. Uh, I, I thought that you had to water the black sapote, um, but this tree has never produced so much bloom before, ever. And I had this tree on water for a couple years and it never produced hardly any fruit. In fact, one maybe, uh, never bloomed good. But now it seems like there's um, gonna be multiple crops and it's like a super bloom. Um, and it does not look like it has any drought stress whatsoever. I don't know, I'm still learning. I learn more and more. The more fertile this property gets, the more um, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that they told people you couldn't grow organically in Florida because there's no, no nutrients. Yeah, because you don't know how to manage your uh, orchard floor. So, okay, I'm seeing a guava that was like eaten by something. Um, I don't see any ripe ones. Uh, I see some that are getting ripe getting pecked. I see branches that are broken, so there's probably been some ripe ones and the creatures have been getting them. But it's blooming again. It's just like a non-stop production on this tree. It's just so... I don't really care for guavas that much, but I do eat them. Because supposedly you eat a guava and I make leaf teas out of the, you know, tea out of the leaves. In fact, I need to do that. <clears throat> So I found when I don't make my uh, tea and I don't drink it, I stop making videos. Um, I can't get inspired. And then I'll have some tea. And it's... I don't know. I'm inspired to make videos again. It's so strange. <clears throat> but I can tell a difference in my uh, mental abilities when I'm um, consuming my teas made from these tropical fruit trees that are grown holistically. Um, and gingers and stuff like that. All the medicinal stuff. This is a, a cha-cha, a huge, well, pretty big for here, um, considering most of them are like Seedlings, tiny seedlings, like 10 inches or less. I think that's the majority of our trees. But we have some that are getting up there. Here's a big one right here. I make ginger from the, uh, or make ginger. I make uh, tea from the ginger leaves also. Sugar cane leaf, banana leaf, <clears throat> long gan leaf. Somebody asked if we have long gans. We have a lot of long gan trees at our place in uh, our beach house. Um, but for some reason, they did not flower this year. I'm not sure if that's because of the freeze. They're fairly good sized trees. They produced a lot of fruit last year for the first time. Um, we have some longan trees there. That's what that was. That's why I was talking about longans. Um, got all this orchard floor, this stuff that they just despise, which holds water and um, is a continuous slow release fertilizer uh, that supports life and life-giving biology in the root zones of the plants of your trees. I do a tea out of biddens, like this. Yeah, this isn't California drought, but this is, this is a summer Florida drought, which I've never witnessed. Um,
I want to go over and look at this uh, other Garcinia tree that has a lot of fruit on it. It's a big tree. It's like a intermedia, Garcinia intermedia. Um, Good to have fruit with all the scare people are getting with their, um, I don't know, food shortages they're predicting. I imagine that's probably going to come true. Um, I don't see how it can get better when nobody's like, uh, Cutting it off. <clears throat> and then they don't even care about polluted fl food and uh, plastics. It's just. <clears throat> so these Garcinia trees have been shown to have their own special phytochemicals, antioxidants, basically, um, that have amazing health beneficial attributes for, for humans so newly discovered antioxidants I attribute all that um, looking at the antioxidants to uh, basically the medical medicinal marijuana people who've exploited marijuana and um, I mean, if it works for the marijuana, it's going to work for the the rare tropical fruit trees, uh, the the uh, phytochemicals in them. I have to go to National Institute of Health and look up the tree, the the Latin name, and they have all these studies that have been done. If they're like. Uh, are bioactive for phytochemicals for humans. Mulberry, that's really good. So I try to get about 30 teas or 30 leaves into my tea uh, a day, or you know, that I drink every day. But when I make the tea, I try to get at least 30 different plants. There's a little seed-grown guava. I think that's the giant, white, crunchy one. But I'm not for sure. I don't see any drought problems, to be honest with you. I just don't see any problems. Got little tiny trees everywhere. Here's a little orange Eugenia calicina, I think, is what it is. Orange or black, it's one of the two. Um, seedling. I'm gonna go over here and get this mulberries I saw on this tree. Another cha cha. So many uh, bugs that fly around. When you have this like living um, orchard floor, I mean, it all just really just makes it's just common sense. <laughs> For some reason, it's hard to get people to unlearn. something especially growers <sighs> I'll eat the spider webs mm -hmm. 
I like these uh, mulberries. They grow like weeds. Pretty much all this stuff grows like weeds when you start it correctly. <clears throat> and you've been focusing on your, you know, soil, the orchard floor, regenerative system that nature puts in place for you here in Florida. People think they have to like just have what they have bought present in the orchard floor. And in order to fix whatever's wrong with, with your orchard floor, we may not think anything's wrong with it, but guaranteed if you let stuff grow by itself, you'd be able to tell what, what, um, condition your orchard floor is in for supporting your tree. So if you get lots of uh, torpedo grass, people hate torpedo grass, but if you get a lot of it and a lot of other weeds growing really well like this, citrus does really well in it. So does pretty much everything else. And um, you don't even have to water it. Uh, torpedo grass, when mixed with other plants, builds soil very well. If you add like animal inputs, like small amounts of zebu manure. I firmly believe that the zebu is here to fix our problems. And um, there's another citrus kumquat. It's a rose apple. The syzygiums are not my favorite trees, but um, they're pretty. And um, there's one here too. All, everything mixed together works. Some people like them, some people don't. Um, this is that uh, African peach that is just so leggy because it's so shady over here. Um, maybe I should stake it up. Um, but it's the one that excretes uh, tramadol, a synthetic opiate. So, I put that in my tea. Cacao leaves I put in my tea. <clears throat> Here's that uh, Garcinia Intermedia that I forgot to show yesterday and it's got so much fruit on it. Um, so we're gonna have a lot of uh, a lot of um, Garcinia fruit and seeds to sell later on this summer or you know fall. Pretty much year round this tree produces fruit. But uh, there's another big one over there, but I'm not sure if it's got fruit on it. Anyway, this is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. We have a beautiful day.